Rosemary Ganley needs absolutely no introduction in water circles at this point. Um, and I have given uh, extensive introductions to Rosemary Ganley, some of which were thought to be kind of eulogies or you know pre-obituaries. And um, I've been very clear that um, they're none of the above, that, that, but, but over those, the course of those many times that Rosemary has presented such wonderful material to us, I have said more than enough about her. I can say it now very, um, synthetically. She's one of us. Um, she's one of us in an ever deeper and more profound way each time we experience her wisdom. She's a <laughs> teacher at heart, a writer by vocation, and an editor going back a while. Above all, I think she's a keen observer of the human condition. She doesn't observe for observation's sake, but she observes to add to the much needed social change efforts all around us of which she is a part. We were happy at Water to inaugurate this year the Water Essay Contest in the style of Rosemary Ganley. That was the title. Feminists change the world 650 words at a time. And if you are, as I am, a fan of Rosemary Ganley's writing, you've read a number of her essays and we can provide you with more. Watch for the um, second round of this wonderful contest. Three women wrote essays that were prize winning and we have invited, uh, we will invite others to, to try again next year. And those essays are on our website. And Rosemary, it's that kind of um, prophetic life. And that's uh, why I follow you, as it were. I, I, I really see you as my sister marching alongside of me um, in our own synod, my dear, in our own synod. Um, but I think that, that um, I also look to your writing and to your thinking and to your actions as being prophetic in a world that needs it. So to hear you talk about everyday prophecy and prophecy will be really lovely tonight. Thank you, Rosemary. Receive our thanks, our warm thanks for being here and tell us about everyday prophets. Thank you, thank you, Mary. And thank you. I feel when I look at this screen that I am among the prophetic class, the, the, the marginal, the uh, people without great power, but who speak truth and live truth and take up the cause of the abandoned and the excluded and the suffering in every way that they can. Um, my, the theme of everyday prophets is, com is coming to me strongly in my late life um, and I when I am looking I see them all around and read about them all around I think in this age of technology and close connections our inner life erodes we 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 are assailed with so much uh, news of evil and suffering and threat and fear and anxiety that like you, I, I am making efforts to reclaim my center. And it's, it's with meditation, especially as Nancy Sylvester discovered communal meditation that that has a an extraordinary power and so i am i am going to share with you a few of the of my five everyday prophets and then invite you to scan all your sources first persons in your life uh, readings that you do poetry that you do news dispatches that, that give you both the necessary information, like a, let's say a Rachel Maddow, um, and, and de declare when in our discussion that this person, famous or unknown, is an everyday prophet for you. And, cl and cling to this, to this person. So I'll start. There's my 59-year-old son, Jim, 
who is a teacher and an environmentalist in BC. And he's the moral center of our family, our family of 15. When I see him, um, he has a 14 year old son who's severely disabled. And Jim told me, he said, when Jay was born, I cried for two weeks and then I stopped crying. And he tenderly suctions Jay when, when Jay uh, chokes up and he does it so routinely. <laughs> and he's the most cheerful person, positive person in the world. So he's an everyday prophet for me in, in family loyalty, kindness, and just pure unadulterated love that's not that that cannot be returned in any in any recognizable way when we think of prophets we often think of old testament um, lamenters people who lamented the situation of the of the people and called them back to faithfulness my favorite is huldah in the, in the Hebrew scriptures. But, but um, I think in this century, we need to claim contemporary people too. Let me just, so number two, number two is the judge in tomorrow's hearing or, or, or not or in the arraignment, not, not the arraignment, but the, the trial. And his name is Juan, Merchon and America story. He was born in Colombia and came to the States when he was six. And he holds, he holds such a, uh, such a moral power. And so we ought to call down blessings on Juan Merchon. But there's also the postman who walks through deep snow and brings me my mail. I have a brother and his politics are not the same as mine, but he's, he has a philosophy and it is, every time you go out, make somebody smile. <laughs> it's so simple and he does. He engages everybody in a little small talk. Uh, let, let's see, was that three? Oh, yes. Well, there's Mary Oliver. She's gone to her reward, but her seven word poem is plastered all over on post-it notes in my kitchen. And it is instructions on living a life. Pay attention. That's the burden of we. We're the intelligentsia, you know. Admit it. And we need to, I have friends who say, I can't stand the news, I don't watch the news. But that, that's not Mary Oliver's. She says, pay attention. This is our world. This is what our people are going through. Let's take it on with them. Pay attention, that's her, her first line. Be astonished. That's Mary's philosophy of if you look deeply enough, you see goodness, generosity, love, self-sacrifice. I'm overwhelmed when I'm looking for it. And then she says, tell about it. That's a seven line poem, a seven word poem. Pay attention, be astonished, tell about it in whatever way, whatever creative endeavor you have. Um, so, oh, and then I, I, I also think that Parker Palmer is a, an everyday prophet. He, he has written, when we feel certain that the human soul is no longer at work in the world, it's time to make sure ours is visible to someone somewhere. That's a kind of a, a um, mission given by Parker Palmer. And his newest book is called, um, anybody help me? 
it says it, it's it's about growing old of grace gravity and sorry folks but the, anyway you know parker palmer but i just invite us now to enter um with all the goodwill in the world, a meditation, and then at the end of it, you could share any story about any everyday prophet that has occurred to you. Thank you, Rosemary Ganley. You've kicked us off with a bang with five people whose lives we can think about as we put others in, into their panoply. We move now into our period of meditation with gratitude to you. Thank you again to Rosemary Ganley for starting us off with a very thoughtful meditation on everyday prophets.